This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. At one of the recognized locations of the burial spot of Rebbe, Rebbe Yudanasi. What do you mean one of the recognized places? How many places could a person be buried? But as we've seen today, the amount of Mekoymois that you could be buried. This is one of the recognized places. Now most scholars say Rabbi Yudanasi is buried in Beis Sha'arim, based on the Gemara Ksubis that says Rebbe Meis Betzipoiri Umakoi Muchanlai Bebeis Sha'arim. However, amazingly, Shita Mekobetzes writes in Masechta Ksubai, Stav Kuf Gimel Amad Beis, Ve Kabola Biyadai Shekivroi Betzipoiri. Even though the Gemara says that his burial spot is in Beis Sha'arim, which we were there three years ago, nevertheless, we have a tradition he's buried here in Sipoiri. Vani Zochisi, I married in Vayisi Al Kivroi. The sheet the writes, Rebbe is buried here. I, the Gemara says, he's buried in Beis Sharim. The Efshur, the Afagav, the Makam, Kivroi, Kanal, Beis Sharim. He bought a spot in Beis Sharim. But how many people do we know that buy Makaymois and they move elsewhere? Not everyone is buried where they buy. But the Yushami says, Rebbe was mess on Erev Shabbos. There is no time to get, get to Beis Sharim. And therefore, says the Shita, Rebbe is buried right here. Now, for whatever it's worth, I will share with you a personal feeling that 23 years ago I was in this spot and I never had a greater Hisoyrus in my life than right here. And when I was in Beis Sharim, it wasn't the same. So, just, I'm just letting, it out of, letting that out of the bag. Now, Rebbe said, Rebbe enjoys a very unusual status, and that is he, after his demise, he would come to his house every Friday night and make Kiddush, and be moitzi his family in Kiddush. Rabbi Kiva Eger, on the spot, is Mitzayin. How did he do that? La Mesim Chavshim, someone who is dead is not Chayvim Mitzvah, can't be Moitzi. And Rabbi Kiva Eger says, look in the Sefer Chasidim, that it is possible, and we're going to see, who wants to come with us on Tuesday to Chevroin? We're going to go to the Shul of Avram Avinu, where Avram Avinu also sometimes came to be, make a minion, and it's the same Kasha. How can you make a minion? A dead person can't make a minion. So, listen to this Shita Mikubetzes. When Rabbi passed away, he said, Whoever says the news that I passed away should be pierced with a sword. Why? Why didn't Rebbe want anyone to know the news? Says the Shita Mekubat says, Rebbe wanted that people should daven for him. Human nature is when you hear that somebody died, you stop davening for them, right? I mean, nobody davens after the person died. But Rebbe wanted people to daven for him even after he died, because if they would daven for him, he would come back to life, the Shita Mekubetzah says. Because it's a mistake to think that you can't daven for someone after they die. It's a toss. You could daven for someone after they die, and if you daven for them, they'll come back. And Rebbe had absolute emuna. <laughs> Rebbe had absolute emuna that if they would daven for him, he would come back to life. So ready for the Chiddush? Chiddush is in, uh, in this Makahim. Why was Rebbe Zoyche to come back to life? After he died. Because he had such a muna shlema that even after he died, you could down for him and bring him back to life. He was Zoycha that even after he died, Taka, <coughs> the Tfilis of Kali Yisrael brought him back to life. Now, there's a little side from Reb Chaim Falaji. I'll come back to his uh, cover in a moment. Reb Chaim Falaji writes, Why was it that Jews used to have more money than they have today? Jews used to make a better living than they have today. Says Reb Chaim Falaji, because Jews used to learn Mishnayis regularly. And Mishnayis is Gematria Parnasa. And when Jews stop learning Mishnah, their Parnasa has been mitigated. So why does, Parna, why does Mishnah bring Parnasa? We could say, Rebbe was one of the wealthiest people who ever lived. So by learning the Mishnah of Rebbe, you have the Hashpa of Rabbi Yudanasi. Part of that is Torah Ugedula B'makar Mechad. Now, by the Levaya of Chacham Yosef Chaim of Baghdad, Rabbi Shimon Agassi, one of the great Mekubalm of Baghdad, said, Why was it that the Ben at the end of his life, he went to Chala, to the Kevra of Yechezkel Hanavi, and he died there in one place, and then he was buried elsewhere in Baghdad. Why did he have like two different spots? 
So Rav Shun Agassi was Megala because the Ben Ishchai was a Nitzotz of Rabbi Huda Hanasi. And just like Rabbi Huda Hanasi has two Makaimais, Sipairi and Beish Sharem, therefore the Ben Ishchai also has two Makaimais, Chala and Baghdad. And the reason they both have two Makaimais is because they're both a Nitzotz of Yosef HaTzadik, who passed away in Mitzrayim, was buried in Mitzrayim, in an Oroin, and then was moved to Shechem. So this is a common phenomenon. A lot of people have different Mekoymois. Yosef HaTzadik, Rabbi Yudha Nasi, the Ben Eshchai, we saw the Ramban. So, okay. Now, everybody thinks that Rabbi wrote the Mishnah, redacted the Mishnah. There is no greater mistake than to say that Rebbe is the Mechaber of the Mishnah. Rebbe did not redact the Mishnah. The Mishnah existed many, many, many generations before Rebbe. Rebbe just collected the authentic, original text of the Tar Shabal Peh. Rebbe did not change any wording. Rebbe just collected the original text. That's why we say, Stam Mishnah, who? Rabbi Meir. Even though we know we never paskin like Rabbi Meir. So what does it mean, Stam Mishnah Rabbi Meir? Stam Mishnah Rabbi Meir means, not that the Mishnah follows the opinion of Rabbi Meir, the words of the Mishnah, Rabbi utilized the original words of Rabbi Meir. So Rabbi did not redact the Mishnah, Rabbi merely collected and decided on the most authentic text of the Tar Shabbat Rebbe begins Tarsha Peh with which word? Me'emasai. Me'e Says the Seder Hadarais, Me'emasai is Gematria Ani Yehuda Kadash. What's the first halacha in Tarsha Peh? Kriyashma Shalarvis. Why, why would Rebbe begin with Kriyashma Shalarvis? The Gemara in Kedushin says, Mishameis. Rebbe Batla Nova. Mishameis. Mishameis, Rabbi Akiva, Noilad, Rabbi. Rabbi died the moment Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi was born the moment Rabbi Akiva died. What was Rabbi Akiva doing when he died? He was saying Shema. So how did Rabbi come into the world? This man Kriya Shema. Therefore, Me'emosai Karna Shema Ba'arvis, Rabbi begins the Tar Peh with Kriya Shema, because that is how he came in to the world. Now there's an expression in Tar Shabbat Peh. We have many Tanoim, and only Rebbe utilizes this expression with the exception of the Toisefta, where Rabbi Shimon Gamliel also uses this expression, and that is Amar Rebbe, Re- Rebbe Oimer, Oimer Ani. Rebbe says, I say. Why does Rebbe say that? Oimer Ani. Who else is saying? Obviously, Rebbe is the one saying. But Rebbe, throughout the Mishnah, Rebbe Oimer, Oimer Ani. And Rabbi Yosef Engel says, this is the predecessor of the expression, Lefi Anios Dati. Because Mishames Rebbe Batla Anova, Rebbe was a paragon of humility, therefore he always used the expression, Rebbe Oimer, Oimer Ani. Now, the words Oimer Ani appear one time in Tanakh, in Tehillim, Parak Memhe. I have a great idea. The words Rachash Libi Davar Toiv are Soyfe Tevois Rebbe. This is talking about the greatest idea of all time. What's the greatest idea of all time? To commit the oral law to writing. And therefore, in this Pasuk is the only time in Tanakh we have the expression, Rachash li bidavar toiv, oimer ani! Ma'asai lamelech. Rebbe wrote the Tarsha Ba'peh. Why? Because, Eis la'asalist Hashem hefiru tayra secha. Therefore, in this Pasuk we have remez to Rebbe, remez to the expression oimer ani, and a remez to the idea that we should write down the Tarsha Ba'peh. Rebbe was also the Gilgal of... Yaakov Avinu. In fact, Megal Amukai says, Rabbi Huda Ha 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 Nasi Ha Nasi Nitzutz Shel Yaakov Avinu. And therefore, just like Yaakov Avinu lived the last 17 years of his life in Mitzrayim, says the Medrash in Parsha Sav, Rabbi Dar Betzipoiri Sheva Esrei Shana Vahaya Koire Al Atzmai Vayechi 
Yaakov ve'eretz Mitzrayim Sheva Esrei Shana. Avram Avinu is the Midah of Chesed. Yitzchak is the Midah of Gevura. Yaakov is the Midah of Teferes. Therefore, Rebbe says in Perkei Avais, Rebbe Oimer, Eze hi derech yeshara kol shehi teferes lo eiseha v'teferes lo emina adam. And therefore, Rebbe, Avram Avinu is the first bracha of Shemona Esra. Yitzchak is the second. The third is Yaakov. Ata Kadosh. Shemcha Kadosh. Therefore, Rebbe is called Rabbeinu Ha Kadosh. You're doing good. So, <laughs> Rebbe is the backbone of the Tar Shabbat Peh. He committed to writing the most authentic text of the Tar Shabbat Peh. And Rebbe also had great emuna in the coming of the Mashiach. And that is why Rebbe wanted to be Oikar Tisha B'av. Why? Because we know on Tisha B'av, Mashiach is born. And Rebbe was a scion of the Davidic dynasty. And we know there's an idea that when a, a, a male progeny comes to the world, the whole family is healed. And David, the Ben David is born on Tisha B'av. So Rebbe felt that on Tisha B'av, the birth, the laid of the Tzmichas Ben David. And therefore, Bikesh Rebbe to be Mavatel Tisha B'av. Hanukkah is coming, so we'll end with the idea that Rebbe committed almost every subject in Jewish law to a Masechta except for Hanukkah. Why is there no Masechta on Hanukkah? Because Rebbe came from the Malchus based of it. And as the Ramban says, the Hashemunahim took <coughs> the Melucha for themselves. So to, so to stand up for the honor of the Malchus based of it, Rebbe, in a display of Loyalty to Malchus based David did not establish a Masechta on Chanukah. So, B'makom Zeh, we could be Mespalel, Takalish Baruch that he should open up our hearts, P'sach Libenu, B'divrei Saira Secha, and the Zuchus of Rabbeinu, Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, we should be Zoyche, Lomoid, Ulalameid, Lishmar Velasos, Ulakayim, as called Divrei, Tamat Harasecha, B'yahava. Just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.